recognize that everyone cannot. Uh, Jude, want to look again as we build ourselves up to building up ourselves on the most holy faith. Want to look at verses 17 uh, through 19. If you have the King James Version, you'll find these holy, divine, and inspired words. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. The Word of God. For just a few minutes on this morning, <coughs> my brothers and my sisters in Christ, Jesus our living Lord, I want to talk from the thought, from the subject, if you will. Remember to remember. Remember to remember. I read somewhere on last week that the Great Wall of China, Delbert, was penetrated at least three times by the enemy. And each time they were penetrated because the guards were bribed. A strong defense, my brothers and my sisters, depends upon strong people. And this applies to spiritual battles as well as military contests and conquests. So, so Jude is saying if the church is to oppose and defeat false teachers, then all of us in the church must be strong and be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so that the devil doesn't bribe us with stuff that looks flashy in the world. There is always the danger of stumbling, and a stumble, as you all know, is the first step toward a fall. So we've been looking at this letter of Jude as he tells us to contend to fight for the faith and now Jude is entering if you will his closing paragraph and as he Sandy closes in on his letter he turns a corner in verse 17 he turns the corner in verse 17 and and the blinker announcing the turn is signaled by but and beloved See, see, Jude moves from the these of the false teachers in verse 16 to the ye or the you of the believing community in verse 17. So what Jude is saying, Deacon Andrew Williams, Jude is saying you, the believing community, you, you, you should remember a few things. You need to remember to remember. Now, now, the ability to remember, to recall, and, and to rehearse, it can help you in the present as well as help you in the future. Remember, to, to, to remember. I remember, you remember in First Samuel se chapter 17, the little stripling, the little shepherd boy David, he told King Saul, Brian, he said, I'll, I'll go fight that big bad bully, the giant from a gath named Goliath I, I'll fight him seeing that you and my brothers and all the other men are scared to fight this gentleman that's six cubits and a span tall I, I'll go and I'll fight this giant because he's, he's, he's desecrating and he's uh, uh, blaspheming against the living God and, and I'll go and fight him and, and Saul looked at him and said son I, I like the stuff that you got on the inside of you said, but son you, you can't go and fight 
Goliath from Gath because you are only David or youth and Saul and I'm sorry Goliath has been kicking butt from his youth so I appreciate your enthusiasm but enthusiasm but David I got a question for you what makes you think what gives you that absolute that Reverend Earl was talking about yesterday uh, leader what makes you confident that you are able to stand for one millisecond in that guy's sight what makes you think that why are you so confident why are you so absolute that you can whoop Goliath he said the reason I'm confident the reason I got an absolute certainty is because of my memory Saul so said your, 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 your memory so, David I don't know if you know this but, but, but he's nine feet tall and nine inches tall he, he, his coat of mail weighs 138 pounds the stuff he got on way more than you he said David the tip of his spear weighs 38 pounds and you talking about you got a memory he said well Saul let me help you he said one day when I was uh, in the field tending my father's sheep he said a lion came and the lion snatched one of the sheep out the flock and the lion was taking it and I ran and caught that lion and then when the lion saw me there was a struggle because I tried to get the sheep from the lion he said with these bare hands I not only got the sheep out of the lion's mouth but I killed that lion with my own bare hands he said and another time I was out attending the sheep and a bear came and brother james smith he said and a bear took one of them little lambs out of the flock and the bear was getting ready to rend them and i went to that same bear and said i rent that bear i grabbed him by his beard and put him in a headlock and choked him and killed him and he said the same god that delivered me from the lion and the bear that same god would deliver me from here that's why my memory helps me as you can see my brothers and my Sisters, remembering can be positive and remembering can be powerful. That can be a powerful tool in the Christian's arsenal. God even employed this with the children of Israel. You remember in the Ten Commandments, God said, you need to remember the Sabbath day. You need to rehearse. You need to recall. You need to go back over. You need to remember that day and keep it holy. God said, you need to remember all the things that I did for you. You need to remember that it was me who brought you out from the wilderness. It was me that kept your clothes for 40 years. It was me that didn't allow your feet to swell or your clothes to rise it was me that fed you with manna you need to remember you didn't dig them wells you need to remember you didn't build them houses he said you need to remember it was me that delivered you from Pharaoh it was me that redeemed you with an outstretched arm God said I need you to beware lest you forget he said remember I'm the one that gave you power to get wealth so he said when you start moving out there in the suburbs he said don't you forget it was me that brought you from Mississippi don't you forget you used to pick cotton don't you forget you used to couldn't drink out that uh, that, that drinking fountain don't you forget you used to couldn't eat at a lunch counter don't you forget you could never get in a hotel it was me that delivered you and, 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 and I need to help somebody because you wondering how your rent going to be paid this month. God said, don't you forget it was me that paid your rent last month. Don't you forget I provided food for you. Don't you forget I provided shoes for your kid. Don't you forget that I healed you without medicine. Don't you forget I regulated your heart. Don't you forget I am Jehovah Rafika, the Lord your healer. Don't you forget I'm Jehovah Nisi, the Lord your banner. Don't you forget I'm Jehovah Rohi, the Lord your shepherd. God said, don't you forget. Forgetting our memory is very powerful. So as Jude, he closes his letter, he provides four things that we need to remember to remember first thing verse 17 through 19 first thing he says you need to remember God's word in the midst of all this stuff the central Michigan the, the tragedy the, the school and just all over the place and people just doing everything that they big and bad enough to do in the midst 
of a president that don't know what he, whether he coming or going in the midst of all this stuff one thing ain't gonna change and that's God's words and we need to remember he tells us in verse 17 he said look he said beloved you need to remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ from the very beginning Satan has attacked the word of God remember the very first words to come out of his mouth in scripture is yeah hath God said that the first time he opened his mouth that's what he said he was attacking the word of God in his opening argument he led leave and, uh, Eve into disobedience and sin he said did God really say that once we begin to question God's word now we are vulnerable to Satan's other attacks for only the truth of God's word can protect us from the lies of the devil it says Isaiah 8 20 to the law and to the testimony to the law and to the testimony he said if they speak not according to this word it's because there's no light in them so my brothers and my sisters Jude is telling us if, if we're going to build ourselves up in our most holy faith if we're going to contend for the faith then we have to know and understand that oh yeah don't worry the world is going to despise it the word of God the world is going to mock it the word of God the world is going to blaspheme it the word of God the world is going to condemn it the word of God the world is going to criticize it the word of God the world is going to denounce it the word of God the world is going to dismiss it the word of God the world is going to dishonor it the word of God the world is going to discredit it the word of God the world is going to abuse it the word of God the world is going to contradict it the word of God the world is going to defile it the word of God the world is going to judge it the word of God the word is the world is going to challenge it the word of God the world is going to joke about this the word of God but I need you to be built up enough to know don't worry let them do that because nothing can stop its power nothing can hinder its progress nothing can change its direction nothing uh, can stop or eliminate its effectiveness nothing can restrict its influence nothing can uh, convict uh, 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 corrupt its message nothing can destroy its character for it is eternal and that's why the Bible said the grass withers the flower fades but the word of our God shall stand forever it's still the only thing that can take an old man and make him into a new man it's still the only thing that can take a and turn him into a preacher it's the only thing that can take a prostitute and turn her into a prophetess it's the only thing that can take you from hating and making you stop loving it's the only thing that can change the heart of man for the scripture said if any man be in Christ who is the word made flesh then he is a new creation old thing are passed away behold all things are become new it's the only thing that can take you all away from earth all the way to glory let them laugh at it let them mock it let them do whatever they want you hold it and you keep it so he tells us in verses 17 through 19 he said you, you need to remember to remember and the first thing you need to remember is God's word because the scripture said it's settled forever the scripture said not one jot nor one tittle of it shall change every word of God proves true God hastens his word to perform it my word would not come back to me void he sent his word and it healed them you just stand on the faith and hold tight to remember God's word second thing you need to remember to remember is not only you need to remember God's word in verses 17 through 19 now you need to remember who gave it to you I'm, I'm right there in verse 17 he said but but beloved remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord 
Jesus Christ. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to show you something as we look at who gave it to you. I'm getting ready to show you something. You're going to need your Bibles. It's a good thing you came to church because you wouldn't have got this on your own. As smart as you. I ain't saying you ain't smart. You are. But, but I need to show you this because you wouldn't have got this by yourself. Watch this. While our Lord Jesus had many disciples, because the text pattern said, you, you got to remember the words of his apostles. So, so Bonner, why Jesus had many disciples, he only selected, uh, selected a few apostles. Twelve, to be exact. Mm. The word apostle means one sent with a commission. I, I, I told you this morning in Sunday school, you, you need to rightly divide the word of truth. And I'm getting ready to show you with the Bible how one has to qualify to be an apostle. Because now you can, go to, you can go to Lakeview Square and run into 10 of them in one mall. No, I'm getting ready to show you the Bible. I'm getting ready to show you the Bible. In order to qualify, y'all stay with me. In order to qualify to be an apostle, which is deliver, different, uh, different than a disciple, I'm going to show you. In order to qualify, a believer had to be a witness of the resurrection of Jesus. How long Jesus been dead? Who you know 2,000 years old? Now, I'm going to show you in the Bible. Acts chapter 1, I'm going to show you. Open your Bibles, put it on the screen, your tablets, your phone, or whatever you... Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read what verse 21 and 22 says from the Bible. And the next time you meet an apostle... Ask him or her to turn to this passage and explain this. Acts chapter 1, I'm, it's, it's dead straight right there in the Bible. Verse 21 and 22. It's right there. It says, Wherefore of these men which have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And you qualify? You running everybody. I'm apostle so-and-so. Beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So you've seen Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm getting ready to expose some more. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 10. I got to show you because it's in the Bible. I, listen, everybody got on a roll. Uh, everybody got a microphone and some black Stacey Adams. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> Reverend, I got some. Can you clean that from I got something on there? I need help. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to read verses 3 to 10. Watch this. Watch this. Now, remember, I'm showing you, Andy, according to the scripture, if you're going to qualify, <coughs> and if you read Acts, only two of those 120 qualified. Only two back then. <coughs> and then they drew lots, and Matthias was the one chosen. Because Judas... Didn't make it. Thank you. Verse 3 says through 10, this is what it says. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, 
how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Here's the gospel right here. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day and he even rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Watch this. And that he was seen of Cephas, which is Peter. Then of the twelve. Watch this. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some are falling asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And he said, last of all, he was seen by me also, as of one born out of due time. Paul did not, Paul, well, I'm going to just read what he said. He said, for I am the least of the apostles, and I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. The reason Paul said I'm not fit to be an apostle, he said, because number one, I persecuted the church of God. And number two, I was not there at the baptism of John. He said, when he said, I was as one born out of due time, he said, it's like a miscarriage with me. Because see, John and Peter and the rest of them, they saw Jesus sleep. They saw Jesus get hungry. They saw Jesus cry. He said, they knew Jesus Christ, but I only knew Christ Jesus. I don't know if y'all got that. I, I didn't know Jesus Christ. I know Christ Jesus. I only know the exalted Christ, not the suffering Christ. So he said, in that sense, I'm not even meet to be called an apostle, but God had a special selection for me, and he made me one. He didn't take a six-week course and come back with an apostle certificate. So, so I'm in the scripture, y'all. And, and the reason I say that is because, well, you'll see in a minute. The apostles lived with Christ during his earthly ministry. Not Paul. Paul only saw the exalted Christ. And that's why when you read his epistles, he always says Christ Jesus and Peter says Jesus Christ. They're not two different people, but Paul was saying, uh-uh, I only met the exalted Christ on Damascus. I don't know nothing about no sleepy Jesus. I don't know nothing about no Jesus who get thirsty. I don't know nothing about no Jesus who go to sleep. I don't know nothing about nobody weeping. I know about the exalted Christ, the one that's high and lifted up. But the rest of the apostles, they lived with Christ during his earthly ministry. They ate with him. They went to weddings with him. They learned from him. And they were sent by him into all the world to carry the good news of salvation. So, you all know, wherever there is the authentic, the counterfeit will appear. Wherever there's the authentic, a counterfeit will appear. You don't believe me? Try one of these restaurants that says authentic Mexican. Go to one, eat it, and see if the counterfeit didn't appear. Watch this. This happened even in the early church. False apostles and false teachers began to appear. And watch this, Reverend Owens. So it became necessary to develop a system to protect the church against false prophecies and forged letters. Since Christ had committed the faith to his apostles, as recorded in Jude 3, one of the main tests in the early church was if somebody said something or somebody sent a letter, first thing they would say, is this what the apostles thought? Where this thing come from? Is this what the apostles thought? Mm. You see, whenever somebody offers you a new revelation, 
which should be your first flag because Solomon said there ain't nothing new under the sun. Listen, uh, y'all think y'all getting high? That ain't new. They had the real stuff. Everything you sm you snorting Tide, powder wall, dust wall. They stuff was real. Stuff out there laced with everything. That's why people dying. They ain't dying because of the drug itself. You didn't snorted some Tide soap, plaster from the wall. The minute somebody tells you they got something new, if that ain't your first flag to run ain't nothing new Solomon said under the sun John tells us in 1 John 4 1 he says beloved believe not every spirit he said try the spirit by the spirit to see if they are of God because he said Shemaiah many false prophets are gone out into the world if you ever happen to get a leg cramp or get up at 3 in the morning, you don't believe me, just hit your TV. And you'll find somebody on BT selling water, crayons, towels, makeup, lotion that God touched. And it's usually, I don't know how it is, I don't know where they find them. It's usually a bunch of black ladies in the hotel, a bunch of black mothers with hats on. They all of them feet swell and they just, he's sprinkling water over all their feet. Everybody in there black except the guy selling the water. But y'all think I'm playing. Just watch. So not only do you need to remember God's word, not only do you remember who gave the word, the apostles. Thirdly, he says in verse 18, now you got to remember what they said. So I got to remember God's word first. Secondly, I got to remember who gave the word, the apostles. I'm talking about those that was at the baptism of John. I'm talking about folk at Applebee's wanting to shake up water on you and have you stand in lines and you got to remember what they said in verse 18 Jew what they say this is what they said they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust Paul told Timothy they're going to they're gonna have itching teachers having itching ears and they're going to say whatever the folk want them to say their ears going to be itching for junk they prophesize that in the last days these type of folk would pop up. So when they pop up, we shouldn't be all in the upray. He told us, Shayla, that they're going to pop up. The phrase in verse 18 says, who walk after their own ungodly lust. This explains why the apostates deny God's truth. This is what they deny they do not want God to tell them how to live. I want to marry who I want to marry. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. A person, now, now, now get this. The same person who says people ought to be able to do what they want to do, they can never answer me this question. I said, what happened if you want to marry your father? Well, you know, Reverend, that's just, oh, no, 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 no. You just said a person should be able to do what they want to do. So where is this going to stop? If a person can do what they want to do, then why is the pedophile in jail? He likes girls that's eight. Leave him alone. You just said let these people do what they want to do. Why are you letting him do it? It gets real dicey then. No one knows what to say. Okay, you got a daughter that's 12. I got a boy that's 40. He want to go with her. Can he? No. Oh, so you got rules, but God can't have none. Because now you don't know what to say. They want to do what they want to do. And that's why they don't like God's word that highlights what they're doing ain't right. They 
want to satisfy their own sinful desires. And the word of God condemns that selfish way of life. Whenever you hear a person say this, I have an intellectual problem with the Bible. No, I'm serious. It means that he probably has moral problems because the Bible contradicts what he's doing. See, I don't smoke weed. So you can pass a law that says if you got five ounces of weed, they're going to cut your head off. Now, I agree they shouldn't cut your head off. But that wouldn't bother me because I don't have weed. But you know who's going to bother? Weed people. Now, they could have another law that said if you get caught with grapefruits and the people wouldn't care because they don't fool with grapefruits. The point I'm making, the reason people get mad is because God's word is pointing out something that they're doing that they want to do that God's word said you should not do. Folk that drink alcohol don't care about weed laws and people who smoke weed don't care about alcohol laws. Because it don't affect them. But when you encroach what a person does, that's when you have a problem with them. And that's what I have a problem with God's word because God's word is saying, that ain't right. And they don't want that over them saying that ain't right. They want to make two plus two five. And God is going, it's still four. You can try it. You can throw it up and down, flip it and do all that. It's still four. So the next time somebody says they have an intellectual problem with the Bible, say, which sin is it pointing out of yours? Because that's what it's doing. Yeah. They don't care. You think they care about Habakkuk? They don't know that book is in there. It ain't the Bible they don't like. It's that verse that says a man should marry a man. That's the only one in there you don't like. You don't have a problem with all the rest of it. Just telling you the truth. According to John 7, 17, the only sure way to know the Bible, the truth of the Bible, is to obey it. Now, before Satan can attack or substitute his own lies, he must get rid of the truth of God's word. And then if he can't get rid of it, then he'll resort to slander and deceit. Because he knows he can't get rid of it because he tried it. If he could, he would have. But it's still here. So now he'll just slander and say, well, that thing, man, that thing was written over so many years ago. You know how long ago the Constitution was written? Folks still believe that. They pull them out their little hip. And the folk that claim they know them don't know them. The same people that complain about the see the hypocrisy, the same people complain about the players kneeling to the flag they haven't read the flag etiquette book because according to flag etiquette it should not be stretched over a football field and y'all do that every game but you don't care but when they bow down you said that ain't check the flag etiquette you should not put the flag even the pin you're not supposed to wear that according to flag etiquette on your suit every president got one on their suit according to flag etiquette that's not right the flag should not be on t-shirts y'all selling t-shirts with the flag on it and then when somebody kneels down, you call them son of a bees because they don't respect the flag. They ain't kneeling because of the flag. So if you're going to do your homework, do your homework. Most things they do with the flag, according to flag etiquette, is incorrect. But no one wants to highlight that. So you, you, they try to slander and then sit and do all this stuff and deceit and use all that stuff to get us off our rocket. But we ain't going to do that. Me and Murphy, we own to that game. Not only do we need to remember God's word, not only do we remember who gave the word, not only do we need to remember what they said, but lastly, we need to remember why they said it. Why they said it is in verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, they sensual, having not the spirit. And see, the, the spirit is capitalized. That means they know Jesus in them. Emma Weatherspoon would say it this way that boy ain't spent a night with Jesus false teachers watch this they want to divide the church 
and lead people out of their true fellowship into the false fellowship. Watch this. You may have heard it. Their appeal is something like this. Craig, they, this is their appeal. It, it goes something like this. You probably heard it before. We have a deeper knowledge than your present church has. You, deeper in knowledge. Okay. Yeah. We have a better understanding of the prophecies than your current church has. Hmm. We have a higher quality of religion. This is what they say. Like, what? Here's how you can tell false teaching in, in a nutshell. False teaching magnifies man. It magnifies man. But true spiritual teaching glorifies Jesus Christ. When the Spirit is ministering through the word the apostles taught, there's edification. Now watch this. But where there's an assembly line manufacturing ministry, there's earthly entertainment and at best intellectual education. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It don't say the intellectually educated is. Look at the movements. When the man fall, the movement falls. Jim Jones died. Ain't no more people's temple. David Koresh died. Ain't no more Branch Davidians. Marshall Applewhite died. Ain't no more Haley Bop coming. Daddy Grace died. Ain't no more Daddy Graces. Father Divine died. Ain't no more Baby Divines. False teachers. The way you can define a cult, if the lead person is the only one in there getting blessed, you're in a cult. God should be blessing every single one of y'all by obviously obeying him. If, if, if only one man in there is getting blessed, there's something wrong. <laughs> something is wrong. Because the man of God or the true woman of God gives you the word of God so you can apply the principles of God so that you can be blessed by God not so that everything comes this way preachers going into churches talking about they need suits well you, you buy them we pay you do what you want we ain't gonna pay you we ain't give you suits like that don't buy the suit with the money we give you why y'all got to buy it The spiritual advisor to the president. Tell me she need a salary. Paula White. She done lost her mind. You need a salad is what you need. You don't need no salary. Let him pay you. He paying everybody else. No, false teachers, look. It magnifies man. It magnifies man. And that's why I even tell our members, no, when you leave here, you need to be talking about Jesus. Stop talking about, talk, you, you tell them about, don't mention me. When you leave here, you tell somebody what Jesus did. Don't tell them nothing about, I ain't got nothing for nobody. You tell them Jesus. That's who, Jesus. Who preached today? Jesus. What happened? Jesus happened. You tell folk about Jesus. Stop telling them about me. You point folk to Jesus. False teaching magnifies man. And when that man crumbled, the whole thing crumbled. I'll never forget, we talking, Nicole, you know, we was talking to this young guy. You know, they had a gospel, that thing that Jake Nim, what was it, Great Fest, some fest. Gospel, for mega fest, all that stuff. You got people who wouldn't tie that they church, they rent a bus, and they go all the way to Georgia. They ain't gave they church nothing since heck was a pup, but they rent a bus. They're going to go down to Georgia, stay in a hotel, and they said they wasn't going uh, to see Jake's. And I said, okay, well, suppose Jake's ain't there. Then what you going to do? Well, wait, oh, oh, so you are going to see Jake's. 
I ain't saying Jake's a false prophet because he's not. I'm just saying how people get people, they view people. Like, so if he wasn't there, would you go, well, well, what? You're saying it's a great, great conference and you're going, but now I tell you he's not going to be there. Now you're debating whether you're going. So what were you going for? You follow me? But he's not. He, I'm not saying to, please don't think I'm, because he's not a false prophet. He's great, great pat. But I'm just saying how we get, you can get caught up in people. And then we as people have to be careful. Because I've had folks, and I've had even members tell me, we go places, and I'm carrying my stuff, my Bible stuff, and, and members, they don't know, they're trying to be nice, but they don't know. Remember, why are you carrying that? Listen, because I got hands. Listen, I can carry this. This thing, the reason I'm carrying it, because it's carrying me. Deliver me from the time I think I'm too good to carry my own Bible. I don't need you to put my coat on. I don't need you to follow me. I don't need you to let me go to the bathroom by myself. I know how. patting you and doing all that no no I'm good I'm good I'm not going to let you make me a God because I ain't and you ain't going to pump my head up because you ain't no I can carry this I don't need nobody carrying that for me that's what's wrong with us now white folks sweat now they think they Jesus Jr sweating ain't going to kill him if he cut that Jerry curl off he wouldn't sweat as much leave him alone but we have to be careful to not allow folks to pump our head up is what I'm saying you get all crazy and slanted out then you start expecting stuff where my water at where my juice who's sitting in my chair where my tea no you didn't gone too far all us is God's children ain't nobody bigger than the other one so we need to allow stop folk to stop making our heads big and some of us like for folk to tell us how great we are they didn't lie anyway at least tell me the truth just tell me you don't like me and I appreciate it False teaching magnifies man. There's no confusion where true teaching is. Jesus warned us of these false teachers in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 23. He warned us. Paul warned us in Acts chapter 17, verse 20 to 31. He warned us. He said, they're coming. False teachers are coming. Peter warned us in 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. He said, they're coming, surely. Deacon as John warned us in 1 John 2, 18 through 23. He said, they're coming. And Jude is taking his whole book and said, listen, I'm telling you, these false folks are coming. And that's why you need to contend for the faith. That's why you need to build yourself up on your most holy faith. That's why you need to put on the whole armor. That's why you need to know your Bible. That's why you need to walk with Jesus. That's why you need to know the truth. That's why you need to know Jesus died. That's why you need to know he was buried. That's why you need to know he rose again from the dead. That's why you need to know he's got all power. That's why you need to know he's the only way to heaven. That's why you need to know he's the son of God. That's why you need to know he's the lamb of God. That's why you need to know he's Mary's baby. That's why you need to know he's Noah's rainbow. That's why you need to know he's Joshua's battle axe. That's why you need to know he's David's shepherd. That's why you need to know he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. That's why you need to know. That's why we want you at every service of the church to build you up. It's not our job just to get you here and waste your time because there's some stuff coming. And remember, the Great Wall of China penetrated three times because they were bribed. We as the body of Christ don't need to be bribed by the flashy stuff in the world. It's some things that you should stand for and you need to stand flat footed and say, I can't be bought. In fact, I've already been purchased by Jesus and I'm standing on the word of God. I may have to stand by myself. I may not be popular. I may get kicked off some committees. I may not be able to go to the Beacon Club no more and eat, but they got other clubs where I can go free. I don't need to pay no membership to eat. I'm sticking with him. If I got to stick with him by myself, I'm sticking with Jesus because he's the only one that can take me from here to there. The door of God's church is open.